divs, p tags, forms. We use these HTML elements quite a lot, but we often forget that there are other attributes and elements available to us. In this video, I'm going to show you some of them, and I'm pretty sure you're going to be positively surprised. All right, so I'm going to be using a live editor, which means whatever I write on the left is going to be automatically displayed on the right. So first thing first, everybody knows ul tag, right? unordered list, which makes our element in the list appear as bullet points. Well, ol is basically an ordered list and it has this start attribute, which actually makes numbering different. So if we put seven, now our elements are going to start from seven. So seven, eight, nine, which is pretty cool. You can use it whenever you have ordered lists on, on your website. Next one is about a simple p tag. Well, as you can see, we have a sentence, it can be something about you, and it's not editable. But what if we want to make it editable? We simply put this attribute and equal true. And now if you go to the browser, you can suddenly edit whatever you have inside. So let's change it to me. And now it stays like this. You can use this feature whenever you we want to have an interactive website with interactive elements for your user. Next one is a mark element. Right now we don't see anything unusual, but what if you want to mark some content on your website? You can wrap, for example, the important word with a mark tag, and now it's displayed in a yellow box. So it's basically marked. A lot of websites actually use this element. For example, GitHub uses it whenever it wants to, it, it grabs the lines of code from the URL and automatically creates mark tags so that they're highlighted in yellow. The next one is actually an accordion, but yeah, not many know about this. It's basically a details tag with a summary tag inside and a couple P tags. Well, summary tag is gonna be the top text of the accordion. And as you can see, we have two children inside. So this is kind of a out of the box browser version of an accordion. Obviously you can style it differently, but people usually use custom solutions for it. The next one we have is an input element. We have a type file input element, which means you it's basically a file uploader. But now what we have at the moment is that we don't have any PDF files because at the moment we're only accepting PDF because accept is equal to dot PDF. But let's extend it for a second. Let's write dot JPEG. Well, now it should also see JPEGs and let me upload JPEGs. As you can see, I have one JPEG, which I can use to upload it to the file uploader input element. Okay, next is the dir attribute. As we know, English is written from left to right, but there are some languages that are written from right to left, for example, Hebrew and Arabic. To make it easier for us, we can use this dir RTL which is gonna make right our content from right to left instead of the left to right. So keep this in mind. Next one is about images. Well, the normal flow of loading images is as soon as the browser sees the image tag, it automatically loads the image, but we can do it with lazy loading. So loading equal lazy will not load the image automatically, but rather whenever the image is in the view. For example, imagine Instagram and you're sc scrolling down you're not going to load all the images at once. You're going to load them as, as you scroll down. Next one is the poster attribute on the video element. At the moment, I put a link to one of the Mr. Beast videos <laughs> and um, we don't have any poster. Poster is basically a thumbnail. I'm going to grab another URL and post it as a poster. And now you should see the KSI as a thumbnail for Mr. Beast video. Sounds weird, I know, but that's how the thumbnails and poster attribute works on the video tag. The next thing we have is the KBD element. Well, KBD simply stands for keyboard. At the moment you see the text, press Alt and tap to change window. Well, Alt and tab are actually keyboard uh, keywords. Well, what if we wrap them with the KBD tag? As you can see in the browser, it's already changing the way it's written. So let's wrap this too. And as you can see, Alt and Tab are now in, I believe in Helvetica, 
to indicate that these are special characters. Cool. Next one we have is a picture element. This one is a, basically a progressive enhancement for loading images. By default, it's going to load this image tag inside. But what if we want to specify different images for different uh, width, uh, browser widths? So for example, as soon as we reach 800 pixels, we're going to load this medium WebP. And as soon as we go above 1200, we're going to load the large image so that you can save the bandwidth. Next one is the ab abbreviation element. This one is not used that often. I'm not sure why, but it's pretty cool. Look, we have NASA as a text inside, and we can also specify a title with a custom text. Well, now it's going to work as a thumbnail and show this national Oronet, or I cannot spell it, but basically is tooltip from the browser. So you can use it whenever you need to. And last but not least, we come to the reversed attribute, which is again works with ordered lists. Let's put a reversed attribute. And as you can see, now the number starts from the bottom. So three, two, and it goes to one. Quick shout out to Sayed for this great article where I took the idea from. I put a link to his profile where you can check more of his content. As always, consider subscribing if you found this video useful and make sure you check the next video where I talk about six oddly useful JavaScript one-liners.